Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, and uh, do an assembly. Okay, so remember that we have a couple different types of things we're working with. We have a part, and those are like pieces of a more complex um, object, right, or a more complex thing that you're making. An assembly is just as you imagine you put a bunch of parts together to make an assembly. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead. We're going to have to make a couple of new parts, so we're going to go ahead and click uh, Part. Okay, so in general, we're going to make kind of simpler I'm going to make some simple parts, okay? So the first thing that we're going to make is going to be a circle. And that circle is going to be... Now, in an assembly, you really have to pay attention to dimensions. If you don't have your dimensions down right, uh, your assembly will not work, okay? So in this case, I'm making a, um, a 0.5 inches uh, radius circle. I'm going to click Finish Sketch. And then we're just going to extrude it to make kind of a peg. Okay, so and that peg is going to be um, one inch in, di in diameter. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create, um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save off this part. So I'm going to click Save, and I'm going to call this Lesson 6, and the peg. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new part. I'm going to leave the peg open, so I'm going to go ahead and do a new part. Um, whoops. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do a, um, a sketch also on the XZ plane. And I'm going to go ahead and create a, um, a rectangle. And I'm going to make that rectangle... Um, I'm going to make that rectangle uh, two inches. Actually, let's make it three inches. And I'm going to zoom all. And I'm going to go ahead and make the other side of the rectangle uh, two inches. Actually, it makes, let's make it 1.5 inches. Now let's make it two. <laughs> Okay, so we have this rectangle. Uh, you know what? Let's make it four. Okay, we're going to finish sketch. And we're going to go ahead and uh, extrude this rectangle uh, a half inch. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and kind of and hollow out this rectangle here. So we're going to go ahead and make another sketch. We're going to put it right on top of the face. So we click Start 2D Sketch. We're going to put it on the top face here. Then we're going to make a rectangle uh, inside. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about the size of it because I'm actually going to dimension it um, from the outside here. Oops. Control Z. Okay, so we're going to make it, uh, oops. Um, we actually, um, there's a thing in, in Inventor where if you want to dimension against, um, against something that's in another sketch, sometimes you have to do what's called project geometry. And okay, and so that, what that means is you just bring in guidelines from other objects. So I'm clicking on the lines of the, of the rectangle here, and I'm doing project geometry. Okay, so notice we get all of these uh, all of these lines inside of our uh, sketch here. Now we're going to go ahead and dimension it, and basically what I'm trying to do here is I want to make it kind of like a shell. Okay, so we're going to make it 0.1 inches uh, from all the sides. Okay, so notice when I do the whoops, so I'm going to dimension to the sides. And notice when I do this, what I'm going to do when I when I do the dimensions, I'm just going to click on that original dimension. So notice that I'm going to define all the other dimensions. So I click, click, uh, move, click, and then I'm going to click that original dimension. Okay. So notice that click, click, move, click, click the original dimension, and that way I get all equivalent dimensions. Okay. So if I wanted to change this, if I wanted to go back and change it to make it like 0.5. Notice that all of a sudden, all the other dimensions would change. Okay, so these driven dimensions make things a lot more efficient. Okay, so I have this rectangle made. I go ahead and click Finish Sketch. 
Um, now what I can do here, oops, is I'm going to go ahead and extrude cut um, down. Uh, I could do two things. I could either do a shell, okay, which would be easy for this top thing, or I can extrude cut. In this case, I'm going to extrude cut, okay, and I'm going to do 0.4 inches. Click OK. All right. So I had this kind of shell that I've made. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, um, fillet all of these edges on the bottom. Okay, so notice I click fillet. I click each of the edges on the, um, on the bottom of this. Okay, so I get this kind of nice smoothed off pattern. I click the check and I have this kind of nice smoothed off pattern around the sides of it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another sketch here on the bottom. I click 2D sketch. Click, uh, whoops, I'm going to click zoom all here. Okay, and I'm just going to make a rectangle on this sketch about right here. Okay, in this case I'm going to make this rectangle uh, 0.2 inches. And point, uh, one inch. Okay. I'm going to get out of the dimension tool by right clicking and clicking OK. Now I'm going to drag this. Notice how I can only drag on one axis here. So, whoops. And I'm going to go ahead and drag it over. And I'm going to change these dimensions to be about double. So I'm going to go two. Zoom all again. Zoom all. Change this dimension to be 0.4. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, fillet the corners of this uh, this object here. And I'm going to go 0 0.05 fillet. Actually, I'm going to go 0 0.025. Oops. Okay, so there we have it. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and also dimension from the top. And I'm going to make it 0.2 from the top. So notice that I'm just I'm just exampling um, how you would have to do it. If you're really going to try to design something that's in an assembly, you're going to have to get pretty specific with these dimensions. So notice that I'm locking these in each each section's dimension. So the, the height and width is dimension, the distance from its neighbors is dimension. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click finish sketch. Um, we're going to click oops, zoom all again, and we're going to go ahead and extrude cut. Okay, so notice that I click extrude. It highlights the only face that's available or the only area that's available in the sketch. We're going to extrude cut. Oops, extrude cut. And notice it extrudes cuts, uh, and we only need to go point one. Now we could just go through all. It probably doesn't matter. Um, but we're going to go point one. Okay, so there we have kind of a basic shape here, and you can kind of see how it's shaping up. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do is that um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, create a second shape, um, but we're not going to do that until we're in the actual assembly here. Oh, one last thing. We're going to go ahead, actually back into Extrusion 3, open up a sketch. And we're going to go ahead and uh, create a circle in the middle of the object here. And we're going to go ahead and dimension that circle 0.5. And you can guess what we're going to do with that. We're going to put the peg through it. OK, and then we're, of course we're going to dimension from the sides as usual. It should already be set. OK, so we have all our dimensions in. Click Finish Sketch. Okay, and we're going to save this off as a case. Okay, so we now have two parts. We have our peg, we have our case, whoops, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to edit the extrusion. So I added my circle to the sketch for extrusion 3, but I didn't edit extrusion 3. So if I double-click extrusion 3, notice that I can add that circle onto the 
onto the extrusion, click OK, and now the circle is extruded also. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is that we're actually going to, um, to create our assembly. So we're going to go up to our part, we're going to click on assembly, our new uh, menu, we're going to click assembly, and then how we're going to place this is we're actually going to click place, we're going to select, um, in this case, our case, and click open. Now, in, a, in the assembly, what you have to remember is the first thing that you create is going to be, so I clicked once there, that is going to be locked in place unless we change it. Then we can right click and click OK to exit. You can click place again, and we can cl click our peg and click open. Now notice that if I want to make copies of something, I wouldn't create multiple IPTs. Like say if I needed 10 of these pegs, I would just click, 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 and I'm creating multiple copies of that peg inside the assembly. So I can undo here, and then I would, um, and by undoing, I actually got out of the assembly. So notice that now I can move this around. Notice the peg moves, oh, and the phone moves. Um, if I wanted to lock the, uh, not the phone, but the case. If I wanted to lock the case in place, I could open this up. I'm sorry, I could right click on it, and I could click grounded. If I click grounded, now it won't. Okay, notice the pin is in the, is in the browser bar there. So I'm going to unclick around it so it will keep moving. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and create an item in place. So I'm actually going to click Create here, and we're going to call it, um, well, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it Sample Lesson 6 underscore phone blank. Okay. So it's kind of a simple version of what a phone might look like. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And notice that I have to place this component somewhere. Notice that I have to highlight one of these faces. So I'm going to go ahead and click the bottom face here. OK, so now I've actually created a, um, a component in place. So you can imagine that instead of creating an IPT as its own file, what I've done there by clicking Create, giving it a name, and then clicking on a location inside the assembly is I actually created a part file inside the assembly. What the benefit of that is, is that I have this the rest of the assembly as a reference. Okay, So now I can go ahead and create my 2D sketch. And now I'm working right on the surface, right where I want to create that part file. Okay. Now what I can do is I can do the same thing as before. I can project geometry from another part inside the assembly. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and project geometry here. Whoops, you got to be careful on project geometry because that might be grabbing stuff that is not in, uh, not on the same plane. So notice that I can, it's possible I can grab that bottom, not the interior space there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to get right on that location. And I'm going to go ahead up. I'm actually going to create a uh, a rectangle right in place there. Notice it was easy because I had that reference point, and 3.8 is exactly right. Okay. Notice it was easy. I'm just going to accept that. It's already constrained for some reason. So, um, so notice it was easy because I'm creating it in place. All right. So I I knew how the size it needed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and finish sketch. And now I'm going to extrude. And notice that I can extrude it up, right? Um, and to make it easier to see, whoops, just a second, I'm going to make it 0.5. Oops, not 5. Make it 0.5. I'm going to click OK. All right, and then I'm going to actually change the color of it as well. So um, if I click on material, let's say that, whoops. If I click on material, let's say that I want to make it, um, oh, the classic chrome is not here, so. Say I want to make it wood. Okay. And I can actually, if I don't want to do the whole thing, I can actually do a surface also, but I just did the whole thing there. Uh, let's say that we don't want to make it wood. Let's say we want to make it um, aluminum.
Okay. All right, so now what we can do is we can come back in uh, and notice that what did I do? I forgot to make the hole on purpose. Um, so we're going to go back into that sketch. Um, we're going to project geometry of the hole. And now we're actually going to make that circle as well. Okay, and it'll automatically get there. We're going to dimension it anyways. So we'll probably just say it's over dimension, which is fine. We're going to finish sketch again. We're going to double click that extrusion again. And we're going to select the profile. Oops. Okay, in this case, notice that I'm having trouble unselecting the profile, right? And I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, but let's say I want to just get rid of the extrusion. What I can do is I can click on it, I can right click, and click delete, and then I can unclick consume sketches. So what this does is it removes the extrusion, but it leaves the sketch. And then I can actually re-extrude it. So let's go ahead and use a cube. I'm going to re-extrude it to 0.5. I'm going to click the check. And now I'm going to click to get back into my assembly. So now I've made my, uh, my part there. I'm going to click return. Okay. And notice that I have this part um, that is here in the... Um, but notice it's not... Well, it is uh, actually constrained a little bit, but... Okay, so now I have this part here. Okay, I can also, in the assembly, I can change the, uh, the um, material of the, um, of the other part. So if I click on a part, I can then actually change the material as well. Let's say I just want to make it black. Okay, so I have my uh, material there. And let's say I want to make my pig some other material. Let's say I want to make it glass. And I want to make it some other color. Not clear. Okay. All right, so now I have my uh, phone case, I've got my kind of phone, and then I've got my, um, my peg here. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble it. So the first thing I'm going to do here, notice that the, uh, um, it is constrained a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what constraints I have. Notice that there's a flush constraint there. That's because I, I, um, I created it on that plane. But let's go ahead and delete that if it's in there, just so we can redo it. Okay. So we have our, um, our things here, and notice that um, a constraint is like gluing things together. So in an assembly, um, there are just a couple different types of constraints you have to use. So we're going to go ahead and click Constrain, and we're going to go ahead and click Mate. So you can see here that Mate is going to glue two surfaces together. So Mate, Mate, glues two surfaces together. Um, a Mate flush makes them coplanar, okay? So in this case, we're going to mate, mate two surfaces together. So we click on mate, mate. Notice that it's surface one. I click here. Notice how we get that up arrow right there. So we click on the first surface. We click on the second surface. We click apply. Okay. And now I can't any longer. Notice how I can still drag these apart a little bit. Okay. See that? So if, if you look at it, from above. Notice that I, I'm trying to drag it up and down, but notice it stays coplanar. So I've actually made it two surfaces together. I'm not sure why the, the second surface is mated, but I could figure it out. Okay, now we're going to mate the back, the front to the back. Okay, so we're going to mate, mate again. So we're going to see I get my little up arrow right there saying that I got a face. You don't ever want to mate a edge. Okay, so don't mate an edge ever. Always get that line that arrow going up. Notice I use the cube if I can't see the surface. So I'm going to get that second surface right there, the bottom surface of the phone. Click apply. And now it's fully constrained. So on a rectangular object, once you have three surfaces constrained, I'm trying to jiggle it apart and it won't move. Okay, so your object there with the constraints is to lock things into place. 
Okay, now the reason why I used this round peg was to show you another constraint. So if you have a, if a, you have a round thing and a round hole, you're actually going to mate to mate. So that's mate and mate. The center line of the peg, and notice this dotted line here, the center line of the hole. If I click apply, notice that now the peg will go through the hole but won't travel anywhere off that center line if I jiggle it. Okay, I'm going to constrain it again. And this time I'm going to go ahead and constrain, I'm going to mate flush the surface of the peg, the bottom face of the peg, to the face.